So the big question is this, how do most agents who struggle to get the information that most successful agents hoard to themselves grow and prosper without this information? That's the big question and this video cast is the answer. Welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. I'm your host, Pat Hyben. And now for the review of the day. All right, here is a new iTunes review on Real Estate Rockstars. I'm a pre-licensed agent and have purchased the cell from Rebus University already. This information has been very, very eye-opening and informative. It really fills the gaps of knowledge and points me in the right directions as what questions to ask. I greatly appreciate Catherine Scarum's insights and immediately bought her book after she came on your Real Estate Rockstars podcast. Thank you so much. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast. So give me a one-star review if you want or a five-star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. All right, Rockstar Nation, I have a great guest. You know, uh, I got a lot of requests um, from you in your comments, which by the way, I appreciate all the comments, all the reviews on iTunes. I think we're close to 300 reviews on iTunes. And a lot of people are asking for, you know, they really love the shows with the rookies. They really love the shows uh, with the 30 under 30s because these guys are, you know, they're basically um, looking at the market today with different eyes and they're succeeding. And uh, I think that everybody, no matter how long you've been in the business, is inspired by that and is actually changed by that because, um, because they're like, if they could come in and do it, you know, from day one like this, why am I struggling with day, you know, 12,000, right? Or, or why am I struggling this week or this month or whatever? I think it's refreshing to hear from all agents of all caliber and uh, no matter when they started, but especially I like the youngins, right? The millennials are coming in and kicking ass from day one. So anyways, uh, I got Madison Kazis on the line. She is from the beaches of New Hampshire and she was just uh, awarded the uh, Realtor Magazine's 30 Under 30, and we're going to find out why, and we're going to find out how she did what she did so fast. So without further ado, Madison, welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Oh, thank you, thank you, and thank you for having me. It really is truly an honor to speak with you. So Madison, why don't you tell everybody about yourself so they get to know you better? Sure. So again, my name is Madison, and I'm 29 years old. I am licensed in both Massachusetts and New Hampshire, full-time real estate agent. I have uh, been in the president's circle at my firm for the past several consecutive years, which is the top 10% of agents in that firm. And then, as you mentioned, I was awarded with Realtor Magazine's 30 Under 30 Class of 2018, which is very, very crazy to me that I'm still kind of in this. I, it's been a goal for several years of mine, so I'm honored to be able to say that now. So did you apply several years in a row and you finally got picked at 29? You know, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I think that they took the age into consideration my last try. <laughs> you know, I've talked to a couple other uh, 30 under 30s and, and it feels like that's what happened to a couple of them. They were like, I applied when I was 25, 26, 27, 28, and then again at 29 and whew, I just made it. So funny. It is, it is true a little bit, although this was my second time applying, but it definitely um, came at the right time. It was when I felt the most confident applying, and it's when I felt like I actually, I did feel like I deserved to be considered, and then to get chosen was just awe-inspiring for me. Wow. Okay, so um, let's talk about some nitty-gritty here. So like how many houses have you sold, would you say, in the last 12 months? Last 12 months, I've sold uh, 31 homes. Okay, beautiful. And, it's, and, and, and you do it all yourself, right? All myself. Um, yeah. Interestingly enough, I'm also a mentor at my firm. And I just recently, a month ago, 
I got assigned a new agent to mentor and I have to tell you within a day of meeting her, I just loved her so much that I actually hired her as my first assistant. So that's another leap that I've taken this year is actually taking on an assistant. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. All right. So 31 houses all by yourself, no assistants up until, you know, very recently. So, um, uh, let's talk about, so what would you say your ECI, Madison, your ego commission income, the total gross uh, revenue you generated in the last 12 months is? Last 12 months, gross commissions was about 178000 178000 Okay. That's, that's awesome. And, and, and what was your profit on that? What, how much did you make? I made about one thirty. Okay. Not bad. So 29 years old, you're pulling in a buck 30. Um, all through yourself. Um, what'd you do before real estate? So before real estate, I was in college. I got a degree in accounting and finance. Okay. That led me into the banking industry. I worked for a pretty large bank uh, for a while, did some mortgage applications there, small stuff, then worked in accounting as well, did a side job of cleaning offices to pay off my school bills. <laughs> <laughs> and then got licensed uh, about seven years ago. So what did you make uh, at your last job before you got your real estate license, would you say? So before real estate, when I was in accounting, I was making, I would say between 40 and 50 a year. All right. So le let's say you made 50 grand. Um, in seven years, you would have never gotten as many raises to make 130, right? You might have got 2% raise, 3% raise, but... Um, Okay, great. So, um, all right. So let's talk about how, right? Um, doing 31 deals after seven years at 29 years old, all on your own. Of those 31 deals, uh, how many were listings versus buyers? So last year was actually, typically it's been about 50-50 for me, but last year I actually had just a hair less listings, like a couple less. So I had about 15 listings and then about 16 buyers, um, which obviously, as a lot of people know, especially in my market area, Boston, Mass, Southern New Hampshire, it's very busy with buyers right now. So I was a little bit more buyer heavy over the past 12 months. Yeah. Well, a lot of agents would, would be even worse than that with buyers and, you know, at 29 years old because they, you know, you know the systems are set up right now so that we gravitate towards buyers from day one because because uh, it's so available with what you can buy and leads and joining a team that has leads or a brokerage that has leads. It's all buyer leads for the most part. So for you to stay focused and be, and be focused on listings, uh, even 15 listings um, says a lot. And I want to talk to you about that. How, at what point or was it from day one that you became focused on listings? So I personally had a, I had a way in my mind, at least, of joining those two things that you just said. So when I first got in real estate, you hit the nail on the head. It's buyer leads. There's buyer leads everywhere. You're doing open houses to get leads, right? But I took that and said, well, if I market to a first-time buyer, then eventually they're going to be a first-time seller, right? Yes. So... I actually did two things. One, I looked for first-time buyers. I would do seminars, first-time buyer seminars, every chance I can get. And to this day, I still do them because all those first-time buyers become first-time sellers and they're mm. going to call me because yeah. I stay in touch. I follow up. Then the second part to that was my door knocking. Door knocking is a very big part of my business. And I'm sure we'll talk about it a little bit more, but the number one thing I would do is when I would sell a property, I would go door knocking and I would talk about the sale. I would say, I just want you to know I sold this house for this much money. Here's a card. Keep it short and sweet. You don't need to be there on their front porch for hours. Just a little bit of information to kind of, you know, tickle the, the fancy a little bit and get them to think about real estate. And then just that's it get off the porch, leave your card and follow up with a nice note and combining reaching out to first time buyers and doing the door knocking has actually been very fruitful for me. All right, good. So let's talk about both of those things. So first of all, let's keep going down the door knocking route. I mean, I, <clears throat> you still door knock? Oh yes. Every week. Okay. So what is your door knocking schedule and what is your system? Would you say? So the important thing about door knocking is you 
have to have something of value, which is really more something of knowledge or information. It never works to just knock on a door and just try to market yourself like that. People are just not really feeling it. But if you go with a very targeted strategic procedure, that's when it works the best for me. So for instance, I choose a subject property. That subject property might be a new listing I have coming on. It might be a listing I just sold. And it could also be a house that I'm doing an open house at. So for instance, we'll take an open house one because I have a pretty cool story about this. Okay. Um, if you take an open house listing, I did an open house actually funny enough for my broker. And this was just last year. I was a little bit slow for a couple of weeks. I was kind of in that weird middle ground in real estate where things are under agreement, maybe no new listings coming on and you're trying to drum up business. So I volunteered to do one of my coworkers listings. I actually hosted my broker's listing himself and I did the open house. Two days prior to the open house, I print up little invitations with the listing address, the price, and the time. And the strategy here is 10 neighbors across the street, five neighbors to the left, five neighbors to the right. Okay, so let me slow you down. So yeah. you pick, step one is you pick subject property, right, which happened to be an open house. And then you set a target, and your target is 10 neighbors across the street. You got it. 10 neighbors to the left. A five to the left, five to the right. So 20 houses. Yes. Okay. All right. Keep going. No more, no less. I feel like a little more than that. It starts to get like too far away from the subject house. And even more so, it's just time blocking. And just it doesn't, have, it doesn't have the impact either, right? Like you could literally, exactly. your houses, you could, you could literally point to the open house, say the seller's name, Mr. and Mrs. Smithson, and they would know. You got it. It's just a little bit more involved with their daily life. So they, they kind of can create a middle ground much hmm. easier. Okay. Okay. That's great advice. Okay. Keep going. What happens next? So I go to those 20 homes, knock on the door. I leave the invitation with them. I just say, my name is Madison. I'm introducing myself because I'm going to be in your neighborhood this weekend. And I wanted to invite you to the open house. Not sure if you or anybody knows looking to buy or sell, but I just wanted you to come see what the market is doing right here in your neighborhood. So come on by and I leave it at that. Just like that. Now that the invitation is just a verbal invitation, right? You know, I mean, no, I actually will print something. I will print just a small little card, maybe with the price of the home, the time of the open house has my contact info on it. And I leave that with them. And it's a card. It looks like almost like a wedding invitation or a... Kind of, yeah. Like a little wedding invitation or party invitation to kind of look a little more official. Okay. And it just says you're invited and the address and the time and all that. And so you I wanted it. to give you this invitation personally. Um, and that's it. And that's it. Okay. And then what happens? So then after that, I will tell you right now, nine out of 10 times, at least a couple of those neighbors are showing up because no... What are neighbors? People always say they're nosy yeah, neighbors. Knows it, yeah, and they're curious, and, and why not, right? I mean, you know, you were invited. They were invited. A lot of them would not normally show up because they would be like, oh, I don't want to be embarrassed, and they're going to think that I'm um, uh, spying on them, um, uh, that sort of thing. But their realtor invited me. Right. So, hey, why not? Why not take the opportunity? Exactly. So then they usually at least a couple of them show up. Okay. But no matter what, I always follow up after with a handwritten note to all the people I spoke to, thanking them for allowing you know me to be at their doorstep for them to open the door and get the invite. I thank them for their time. And I include a business card and just let them know that if they do have any questions about what the sale is doing there, they can feel free to call me directly. Wow. Okay. All right, good. And then, uh, and then you do the open house, and you can't be a slouch at the open house, right? Because you don't want them showing up, and then they're like, "Oh, you know, I don't want this girl representing me. She's on her. She's, you know, playing Candy Crush the whole time I was at the house." So how do you, how do you make sure you're getting a good impression? So the best impression is first off, be to the open house early. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. My biggest pet peeve is when I see new agents, and I'm guilty of it back when I was new in there. The open house is at noon. Always. At noon, I, I, yeah, I've, I've shown up to plenty late. What, what, um, how early? I like to get there a good 20 to 30 minutes early. That Absolutely, gives me enough yeah. time. 
Mm-hmm. Gives me enough time to set up, set balloons up. I also can't stress it enough that in that moment, this is how I was taught by my mentor and I continue to teach new agents. It's almost like a mini interview process. When those neighbors come in, they're looking at you. They're looking at how you're dressed. They're looking at how you're behaving. They're looking at if you're sloppy or not. So use that as like a mini interview. Dress up. Use it as an excuse to wear something fancy and and sit there professionally. Have maybe some refreshments out. You know, it's you don't need to have food at open houses, but maybe some bottles of water or something are great. Have a little light music on. Set the mood so that when people walk in, they're like, wow, this agent is prepared. All right, Rockstar Nation, as you know, I wrote a book. It's called Six Steps to Seven Figures, A Real Estate Professional's Guide to Building Wealth and Creating Your Own Destiny. Gary Keller wrote the foreword, and I have sold over 30,000 copies of this thing, and uh, it is the go-to book for all agents, new and experienced, and it's been a really exciting thing for me to do, and I just love giving back. And so I made a decision recently to give away free copies of it. Everybody in the past has always paid in bookstores and online, and you can still pay if you want, but I gave away 100 copies last week, and it happened so fast, and so many of you guys reached out to do this that I'm going to give away another 100 copies now, and so this is a 200 total copy offer. Anybody could get it. I'm going to give it to you for absolutely free. And it's not going to be the cheesy version by any means. It's the same book that you would buy in the store. All you need to do is go to freesixstepsbook.com. Freesixstepsbook.com. All I ask is that you pay the shipping and handling on it, but the book itself will be absolutely free. That's freesixstepsbook.com. You can also text the word PAT. Yep, my name, P-A-T, or a shortened version of my name, P-A-T, to 444-999. That's text the word PAT to 444-999 to get a free copy of Six Steps to Seven Figures or go to freesixstepsbook.com. Get them while they're hot, guys. Free books here. And as they say in the baseball game, free books here. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good, right? If you're going to dress up, you know, because dressing down is getting more and more popular. So if you're going to dress up one day a week, let it be that open house where you're on stage, right? You are spot on. Exactly. Okay. And then what else? So then after the open houses, like I said, I always make sure to do my follow-up handwritten notes. But then the most important thing I have found It's just keeping in touch with these people. You know, maybe when the house goes under contract, maybe sending out a little a little postcard to those 20 neighbors that says, hey, congratulations, your neighbor's house is under contract, just so you know. Or maybe when it sells even saying, hey, this is what it's sold for, just so you know what what type of equity your neighbors are having. What do you have for equity? Call me to find out. Yeah, what people don't realize is there is a a true phenomena that if a for sale sign goes up in a neighborhood, right, that guaranteed within 30 to 60 days, a second for sale sign will go up, you know, within a couple of houses or 30 houses or so on that street, on that street or surrounding or nearby. Don't know why it just always happens. And it sounds like you're banking on that phenomena, right? You know that another house is going to pop up and you're hoping to get into their minds uh, before it does. You're spot on. And the funny story about this is last yeah, tell summer. Me. Yeah, last summer I covered my broker's open house. My broker listed a house and it was number 19 on this street. The street it was on, it was number 19. So I said, you know what? I want to drum up some business. I'm going to go door knocking and I'm going to invite everybody to the open house. So sure enough, I knocked on number 17. So literally right next door and invited them to the open house. They came to the open house. After the open house, I was packing up in my car, putting my signs in and all that. And all of a sudden they walk out to my car and they said, could you come check out my house quick? They go, we actually were really impressed with the fact that you invited us and we need to sell our house because our job just transferred us out of state. 
and we need to get it listed within a week. Wow. <laughs> and not only did I list it within the week, but I sold it before my broker actually got a chance to sell his listing. And <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. That's embarrassing, right? I mean, that's like, he's like, oh, but hey, you know, I mean, at least his sign was still there because he was the broker, you know, so it looked, but still, you know, that's, that's funny. That's a good one. Um, okay, great. So I could totally see how that works, right? Um, and is that all you do or all you have done? Or let's say you do that for an open house on a Friday, um, what about Monday through Thursday? Are, are you just picking other targets of recently sold houses or houses that you have listed or what, how are you doing that? So for the door knocking itself, I try to stick to my new listings my sold listings where I represented a buyer and any open houses I do. For me, I feel that going above and beyond that, it's just getting a little too much. Those three fields, I can manage it and I can also devote the best of my energy to and those. You can commit three. to it. Like that's your personal policy. So any house you work, if you work with a buyer and you sell them a townhouse on 27 Umpty Ump Street, part of your personal policy is to walk that those 20 houses and be like, hi, just want to let you know that I, I sold the house right across the street. I'm bringing in your new neighbors, Sarah and Andy, and um, nice to meet you. And you're going to do that 31 times because you've got 31 sales, right? Roughly. Yep. Or so um, every year, which, you know, which is, you know, once every other week or once a week almost, once every 10 days. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's about exactly. You're spot on. About once a week is how I do it. I do it weekly. Yep. What day do you find works best and what time? Hmm. So I would say it's a mix. I would say like midweek afternoon, like Wednesdays at like four to five even because people might be getting home, but yeah, not quite right. dealing with dinner or Saturday mornings around 10, 11 a.m. Okay. And, um, and do you use any technology for that other than, um, you know, tax records and things to find their addresses, names, that sort of thing? You know, I have to be honest, our local MLS is a wealth of information. And I really think that a lot of us don't even tap into our local MLSs enough. But mm. I have a wonderful MLS and we're able to tap into that to kind of get public records and, and streets and people's names and so forth. All right, beautiful. Okay, so let, let, let's switch gears and um, let's uh, talk about the buyer end because you said, hey, you know, you got in seven years ago, you were 22 years old, which I love because I started when I was 21. Mm -hmm. And you said, I'm going to deal with first time buyers. Um, and you set out to focus on first time. I mean, how it's easy for someone to say that. But how do you focus on that, right? Most agents just become junkyard dogs. What if you get somebody retiring, you work with them. If you get somebody with this is their fourth purchase or a relocation, you work with them. How did you say, I'm going to focus on first-time buyers? What, what did you aggressively do to get the deals that way? So I've actually become pretty well known in my market area for my seminars. I do seminars once a quarter. Mm. And they're quite large seminars. I spend a lot of energy and time into producing these. They get about 50 to 60 people every what? time. Okay. Yeah. So we need to hear about this. So, <laughs> okay. Then we're, you know, we just need to talk about this. What, so map it out like a third grader can understand what you do step by step to get 50 people to a first time buyer seminar. So step number one is teaming up with a lender because it always helps to have a lender there to not only talk about the finance side, but also to split the cost, right? So team up with a lender that you really trust. Second, if you want to market it, the best way to market it, market luxury rentals and luxury gyms. Okay, let's stop there. Luxury rentals and luxury gyms. And, and it's a loaded question, but the reason is because first-time buyers hang out there? Well, I have found, for me, a lot of the luxury rentals in the area, we have some beautiful luxury rentals out here, the people are paying two, dollars $3,000 a month sometimes. And if they're paying money like that, why aren't they owning? Why aren't they investing the money into an asset? So that's kind of the marketing technique you do with that. You, I do mailers. Um, sometimes I link up. These are 
big complexes out here in this area where they even have a property manager you can call and say, hey, I want to set up a booth in the foyer giving out information about a free seminar I'm doing. Um, and typically those people I have found, especially in Boston, like north of Boston, it's usually professional people that maybe got relocated out here. So they got into a rental because they weren't quite ready to buy. But now it takes somebody like myself to say, hey, you're spending you know, $2,500 a month on a rental and you got transferred out here for a job. Why not settle down and, and put that money into an asset? And it almost takes somebody else to kind of let them know that that's an option. So, okay. So, okay. So first of all, like how, let's go to the gyms, right? Cause that's something mm -hmm. different, right? Then that a lot of people might not have thought about how exactly do you market in a luxury gym about your first time buyer seminar? So there's a couple of ways. One is that the, the methodology and the thinking of why I kind of started working with these luxury gyms is kind of multiple parts. One is luxury gyms come with a high price tag, right? So Clearly, people probably have a little extra disposable money throughout the month to be dropping money on a luxury gym. Two, people that have the time to be hanging out at these gyms probably are at a stage in their life where they're millennials. They probably don't necessarily have like a large family yet, have tons of kids. They have a little bit more time on their plate, and they have a little disposable money. And a lot of the gyms in this area have a like a closed circuit TV system that people are when they're like running on a treadmill, there's a TV in front of them. Yep. Yep. I've seen it. Yeah. Yes. So I actually signed a contract about two years ago to have a commercial, a 30 second commercial played on those closed circuit televisions once every hour while the gym is open. So there's a few gyms here that I do that on. So I utilized those 30 second commercials and then pulled in my ads for my seminar on those 30 second commercials. Okay, cool. Cool. And, and that's the ad is you talking. It's, it can be anything. I change it up like every six months, depending on what I have going on. It can be just like a slideshow. It can be a video. It can be me talking. It could be a little flyer presentation. Let's say it's you talking, right? Do, do, do one right now, but just, just wing it. Sure. All right. Sometimes I say something like, um, are, you know, are you living in the area renting and paying in over $2,000 a month to rent? Did you know that you could actually have an asset that that money is going to and you're actually getting a tax benefit at the end of the year? There's awesome ownership opportunities for first time buyers and to go over the process of first time buying, I'll be hosting a seminar at 123 Main Street on Wednesday, July 1st from 6 to 8 p.m. It's a free event. There's flyers at the front desk. Please grab one as you leave the gym today, and I hope to see you there. That's awesome. And then you, and then you stack a bunch of flyers at the front desk. Correct. And usually I, have, I just go in and ask for, like, the manager and stuff, and if there's a bulletin board or something like that, I'll ask, hey, can I put it up there? Or one thing I have found is gyms have a pretty amazing database of all the members that go, and sometimes you can just ask, hey, I'd love to offer your gym members an invitation to a seminar I'm doing, and I'd also love to maybe offer them, you know, a door prize if they come to the to the seminar, would you mind including it in the newsletter you send out? Yeah, and it gives them something to send out, right? Because they may get yeah. tired of sending out like fitness tips. Yeah, exactly. So you kind of work with them and say, <laughs> what if you send it out and send them out this information? And if you just get a nice relationship, you'd be surprised how excited they are to do it. Because like you said, it's a local business helping a local business. It kind of is a win-win for everyone. Yeah, that's awesome. And you can refer people to their gym. Exactly, exactly. What do you think about the word toolbox? What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable. 
referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you can think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox and it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient. And the thing is, it's absolutely free. All you got to do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox 444-999. Do it now. Yeah. Okay. So now take me to the day, right? You do this four times a year. So you probably got a system. What, uh, how long is it? Um, besides a lender being there, like, what do you say during it? Um, what do you give out? Uh, all that stuff. Sure. So they generally are midweek. They start at six o'clock. The actual seminar part I'd say is between like six to eight o'clock at night. And then I usually stay late in case people want to ask me questions that maybe they're just a little too bashful to raise their hand during the night. Um, so I'd say all the way out. I've been there as late as 10 o'clock at night sometimes when they've been big ones. But I'd say from 6 to 8 o'clock, um, 6 o'clock starts. I like to introduce myself, the lender. I like to talk a little bit about why we're doing this and how we want to educate people and bring knowledge to potential you know, buyers in the area. I pass out a, a little booklet that I put together, and it actually has like a sample contract in it for buying a house, like a sample offer contract. And then it also has a sample listing sheet so that people can see what to look for on a listing sheet, how to start really reading that data on an MLS listing. And then, like I said, I put in a sample contract so that they kind of get an idea of what type of information I would even need when I'm working with somebody when we get to that point. And we literally go through the contract together. We go through the listing sheet together. I talk about things like scheduling a showing on a house. I have found that a lot of first time buyers don't realize that you might need 24 hour notice before you get in a home. It's not, we can't just like wave a magic wand and get there the same day if, if somebody's still living there. So I kind of go over all those little nuances so that people are prepared when they do begin their journey. Okay. That's awesome. And, and, and so do you, you got all this stuff, they get this free folder of all this stuff. And, and then it's kind of a lecture format, right? Where you're just kind of telling them, um, this is a contract. This is what you need to know. This is an MLS sheet. This is what you need to know. Now, where does the lender come in? First of all, where's the lender come in? So I always personally, this is how I like to do it. I start by introducing everybody. Then the, I say the first step in home buying is getting pre-approved. Then I let the lender talk for probably 20 minutes about oh, about what man? about that. He talks about the pre-approval, what he's looking for, credit, income, debt to income ratio. That's where he talks about that. This kind of explains for, everything. Kind of like how you're explaining everything. Exactly. And then we take questions. So he'll talk for a few minutes, ask if there's questions. And I got to tell you, I've had really good luck at getting very good participation. Okay. So it's kind of like an AMA and ask me anything, right? Yeah. Ask, ask the lender anything, right? And, and then how do you close it up? Like how do you turn them into buyers? So what I do is I always explain the importance of having a buyer agent as well, because I think a lot of realtors know that, especially when the market's hot, what's the first thing buyers tend to say? Oh, well, if I go directly to the listing agent, I'll, I'll have a better opportunity, won't oh. I? So I kind of address that and how it actually is in a buyer's best interest to have somebody represent them and kind of be their voice of reason and fight for them and negotiate for them. And I explain that in detail. And then at the end, Everybody has signed in. I have all their information. I have their names, phone numbers, email addresses. And this is where the most important thing in real estate comes up, which I feel a lot of new agents kind of slip through the cracks on, and that's follow-up. You have to be following up with everybody that you talk and meet with. So that, that's the main thing, right? It's just giving, giving them tons of content for free. Everything that, you know that you could think of, right? Um, and um, not exp 
expecting anything that day in return and have them leave going, wow, I'm so much smarter than I used to. And then following up. Now, how do you follow up? I like to follow up. If I have an address, I'll always do a handwritten note card. I'm a big believer in that old school handwritten touch. If I don't, then I'll always be sure to do a phone call. And what do you say? Usually I thank them for coming. I ask them if they had any questions that maybe weren't addressed at the meet at that seminar. And I always ask for feedback. I say, what did you like about it? But what didn't you like? What is something that you could give me as feedback that you think I should change about this? And I ask for criticism. And then do you say, would you like to schedule a time to, to sit down and talk more? Or how do you go, how do you go into the close? Of course. The, and I bring it up even at the end of the seminar as well. And then when I follow up with people, it's kind of a way to say, so how, when are you ready to do this? And that's a buyer consult session. If I know somebody wants to buy, I, I don't even show them a house until they sit with me for a buyer consult session. They're approximately an hour but we sit together. We usually meet, um, funny enough, we actually meet a lot for coffee because I feel it's a little bit more casual and friendly and, and a little bit more relaxed. Otherwise, they'll come to my office and I invite them to a, a 60 or 90 minute consult session with me privately where we can talk openly about what their plans are, what they want to do, what are they looking to do with buying a house. And in that you know, hour, hour and a half session, that's when we really establish a relationship. And now we're, we're, we're trusting each other. And now we're, we're getting a little bit more open with each other. And that console session idea changed my career. That, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Wow. Wow. Amazing. That's, that's so cool. And it's so easy to do. And, and so how many of these have you done, do you think? The, oh, my goodness. The console sessions? Yeah, I know. Uh, well, probably hundreds. Probably hundreds. hundreds. Because I have to be honest. See, here's the thing. If you really think about it, I think when you're a new agent, you're just so excited to show a property, right? Yeah. You're like, oh, right, yeah, sure. Yeah, I was okay, I'm going to run out and do it. And that's all well and good. But then as you build your career, you can start to, unfortunately, it's not so much wasting your own time, though that is a small portion of it. Sometimes you're wasting the buyer's time. They might have stuff they need to work on with their credit, or maybe they haven't even narrowed down where they want to be or what they want to buy. And the consult session, it creates organization. It says, okay, we met at a seminar. Now we're meeting personally. You need to get pre-approved. This is what we need. We need to explain where the deposit money is coming from. Some people pull their money from like a 401k and that takes time, which I would need to know if I'm writing it on a contract. I need to know, well, how long do they need to get that second deposit in? Do we have to request it from some retirement account? So it's kind of creating organization and a plan, a very streamlined plan to them buying a home. And I'll tell you right now, I've done plenty of these consult sessions where, quite frankly, the buyers actually were not ready yet. But guess what? In six months, when they are ready, they remember the fact that I took the time to sit with them and they call me. Hmm. And do you have the lender at the consult session? No, I do not. I feel it's a little bit less intimidating if it's just myself. We also get to establish a little bit more of a friendly relationship, get to know each other a little bit more. And I feel that one-on-one -on -one is, it's a little less intimidating. We drink a coffee together. We might meet at a Starbucks and I've had far better luck with it being just myself. Well, and, um, and, and do you get them or do you attempt to get them to sign a buyer broker with agreement with you at that point? Or is your philosophy, um, I'm just going to not even bother with that or wait. I actually do incorporate the buyer contract with the consult session. It kind of depends on how it's going. Cause like I said, sometimes after meeting with people, we, we might realize, Oh, this isn't quite the right time for you to buy. Maybe you do need to wait a few months. And if that's the case, I'm not going to push for that. But if things are going down the path that I can tell, okay, this is, this is legit. And these buyers are going to start looking this weekend then absolutely, I bring out that buyer contract. And I have to be honest, I've never had a buyer say no to signing it with me at the consult session because I've already spent an hour, an hour and a half. Reciprocity, right? Or, or more because you've, 
they they've met you on stage, right? So you're sure. you're automatically an expert in their minds, right? And then they've met you face to face. So you've given them so much that so the least they could do is sign an agreement with you, right? Exactly, exactly. And it, I'm telling you, that single mindset there really did change my career because at the beginning, I was one of those agents that was like, oh, this person wants to see a house. Okay, I'm going to run out and show it. And, you know, then a couple weeks later, you find out, oh my gosh, they're not even close to being pre-approved yet. So it's the education process changes everything. If you educate the buyer, you spend a couple hours harvesting a relationship with them, it makes you so much more profitable in the end. You know what I love about your business, Madison, is that number one, it's very purposeful, right? Like you, you have you have two major pillars, right? You have first time buyers, and you have um, listings in neighborhoods that you've had success in for the most part, or been in, or know about, right? Not just randoms. Um, and um, the other thing is, you're going, you're going for pools of both buyers and sellers that aren't what uh, some people would call a red ocean. A red ocean is where you have a whole bunch of sharks in it and they're eating up all the fish and eating each other and, 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 and creating all this blood in the ocean. And then you have a blue ocean, which is there's no shark blood, right? There's not, there's, so you're going in this blue ocean where, where you know, very few people are doing first-time home buyer seminars, right? And so you're not competing against all these other agents, right? The, the agents that are already on, the buyers that are already online going to all these platforms, that's a red ocean, right? You're picking up buyers at gyms and at, at luxury places and, 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 and smart ones that want to learn before they just jump into things. Um, and you're going after listings and you're going after listings. In my book, Six Steps to Seven Figures, I talk about in step five, I talk about build on a success up, not from the ground up. And what that means is, you know, start where you've had success. And by you having an open house, a success. By you selling a house, it's a success. It makes it so much easier to win if you've had a success in a neighborhood than going into a just a random neighborhood. And so you figured that out and, uh, and it's working. And, and, and I commend you for that. So this, this is awesome. So Madison, this, uh, this has been so helpful. I know that everybody's going to get so much out of this. But listen, I'm going to put all of Madison's information on hybendigital.com backslash Madison. And it's, I'm going to spell her last name. Hold on, it's K E Y S. Is that right? Yeah, it's okay. Yep. Um, K A Z E S. All right, Allie, so edit that up. Um, and it's Madison K A Z E S. Hybendigital.com backslash Madison K E K A Z E S. Madison, as you know, everybody that comes on the show brings a free gift with them uh, that the rock star nation could download. I'm going to also put that on Madison's show notes in Madison show notes. What is your free gift today, Madison? It's actually five steps to successful door knocking. I know it's an intimidating thing when people are new, but I'm telling you, it really reaps great benefits. So follow those five steps and I know you'll have success as well like I did. Thanks. That, that's great. I love it. And I'm going um, to put that in the show notes. I'm also going to put it in the agent success toolbox, guys. And you can get that by going to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox. That's hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or texting the word Toolbox to 444-999. Madison, this has been brilliant. Listen, if I'm ever in the beach area of New Hampshire, I will definitely uh, look you up and we can break some bread. Oh, I would love it. I hope you make it out here. I'll see you. Thanks so much. And congratulations right. on your 30 Under 30 nomination. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for tuning in to Real Estate Rockstars. If this free content is giving you a ton of value, I want to ask a small favor in return. I need you to pull out your pointing finger and hit the subscribe button. Yes, hit subscribe, please. The more subscribers that we get on Real Estate Rockstars, the better guests are attracted to the shows. We'll get more guests from the top companies, from the top teams, and even more celebrity guests like Robert Kiyosaki and Barbara Corcoran. Also, if you're not a member of our free Facebook group, 
go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio right on Facebook and join the conversation. I'm on there myself on FaceTime Lives, and we have a lot of communications and questions about the show, and I'd love to see you there. And it's free. People ask me all the time, where am I on social media? I'm real easy to find. Just type in my name. My IG is I am Pat Hyben. It is blowing up on Instagram, adding tons of subscribers. And I'm on there probably twice a day. So definitely follow me on Instagram as well as everywhere else. Thanks again for listening and keep rocking.